Hi guys and welcome to the Gone To series. This is in continuation to the part 1 where we saw all the problems which may arise if you are creating an object inside another class using the new operator with the help of a restaurant and T class example. We clearly understood how bad is your class's design when you create a direct dependency of one class over other. Now we understood the problem. But what's the solution? How the restaurant class use the T class for preparing T without creating T object inside the restaurant class. And here comes the dependency injection principle into the picture. It will solve the problem. The restaurant class will use the T class without creating T object inside it. Using such a principle simply enhance the code readability your code would be better manageable. The Spring Framework is the most popular and used implementation of dependency injection principle across the globe. In this tutorial, we will understand the DI concept using the same restaurant and T-class example. And in subsequent tutorials, we will see demos on how Spring Framework has implemented the concept in detail. The literal meaning of dependency injection is to inject dependency of an object from outside. Alright, let's understand the concept with a real life analogy. You want to have a cup of coffee and you know this depends on many other objects or has many dependencies like coffee beans, milk, sugar, a clean mug, electric kettle to boil the milk and any other ingredients which you like in coffee. You have two choices. You can prepare the coffee object by resolving every single dependencies of it by yourself from start till end. Or you just order someone who is an expert for preparing coffee. You will get the end product that is cup of coffee without worrying about any of its dependencies. The coffee expert will first gather all its dependencies and then inject it into the coffee object before giving it to you. So it's like you want to have coffee, why to bother about its dependencies? Same concept applies in coding also. For example here, why are you creating dependencies of restaurant class yourself? You need restaurant object, then why taking care of creating its dependencies yourself in the class? Outsource this task to some expert which could be a program written by you or pre-existing ones like Spring Framework, which does the job of creating and providing the dependencies of the requested object at runtime. From now on, we'll call this expert as some third party program. So the idea is when the restaurant object is created, all its dependencies would be created and provided to it from outside by such a third party program. In order to use such a third party program, you will need to change the class's design also by introducing an interface in your project. You will use an interface which will bind the restaurant and T class. Let's write an interface hot drink. The restaurant class will use this interface instead of T object and the T class will implement this interface. In the restaurant class, you will write a constructor or a setter method using which the third party program will initialize the value of hotting interface with the T object. I've written here constructor method. You may change it with a setter method like this. All depends on your choice. So you have made all the design changes. Now you simply instruct this third party program which supports DI that at runtime when the restaurant object is created, it should create and inject the T object into the restaurant class through the constructor argument. If you're using Spring Framework, this instruction you provide in a configuration file provided by Spring. And if you're using some other third party program, you provide the instruction the way that program accepts it. That's all about dependency injection. Spring Framework provides two ways of dependency injection using the constructor way and the setter method way. It's difficult to understand the concept without a proper demo. Even if you didn't understand the concept fully, 
Don't worry as of now, I will cover everything in depth related to it in the subsequent hands-on tutorials. In the next tutorial, we will see the installation and setup needed for Spring Framework using an Eclipse IDE.